Hi there, Dr. Terry Shaneyfelt for UAB Department of Medicine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use data from a study to make a patient-specific estimate of effect. Now, this is important because patients we take care of are often sicker or at times healthier than those that are enrolled in a study. And to use this estimate directly from a study and say, well, your risk is reduced by 30% can be misleading because it doesn't give the patient any sense of their baseline risk. So I think it's important to actually use this data combine it with the patient's actual estimated risk to come up with a more specific estimate to help them make a decision. So how do we make this calculation? Well, I'm going to need two pieces of information to make this calculation. Number one, I'm going to need my patient's um, risk of the outcome of the study. In this case, it's the risk of death. And the next thing I'm going to also need is the uh, measure of effect from the study or the outcome from the study. So how do I estimate my patient's risk of death? Well, I could guess, but this is not going to be very accurate. If there was a subgroup that fit my patient, I could use the placebo event rate to estimate their risk of death. Uh, but there really wasn't a subgroup that fit my patient in the RAL study. And so what I like to use most commonly is a validated clinical prediction rule. In the case of heart failure, there's one called the Seattle heart failure model, um, which predicts one and five years. Um, mortality. When I plug this scenario at the top of this video into Seattle heart failure model, it comes out to that this patient has a 56.4% chance of death over the upcoming year. That's pretty high. And then my measure of effect is reported right over here. So in this case, it's reported as a relative risk of 0.7. But sometimes it also just be reported as a relative risk reduction. A relative risk reduction is just 1 minus this, or 0.3. So let's look at two different ways to make this calculation. First, let's do the relative risk method. So it's actually a very straightforward calculation. And all you do is multiply your patient's risk of death, in this case 0.564, and I need to express it as a, a decimal. And you just multiply it by the relative risk of 0.7. And when I do that, it comes out to 0.395 or 39.5%. So I've taken my individual patient's risk from 56.5% risk of death down to 39.5% risk of death by giving them spironolactone. I can also make this exact same calculation using the relative risk reduction, and but it is one extra step as we'll see. So again, I calculate or I multiply my patient's individual risk of death this case, multiply it now by the relative risk reduction, and that gives me 0.1692. Um, and so what this has done now is tells me what's 30% of this number. And so now I have to actually subtract this away from my original risk to get my final risk. So I'm going to subtract 0.564 minus 0 0.1692. And when I do all that, it comes out to 0.395 or, again, 39.5%. These two numbers have to be equal to each other because it's basically making a calculation in the same exact way. So hopefully you can see that this is more useful in telling a patient exactly what their baseline risk is and then how much you can get it down to by giving an intervention. It gives them much more specific numbers to make um, a decision on therapy versus just telling them some relative numbers which are somewhat meaningless to them because they don't know where their baseline risk begins at. So now what I'd like you to do is have a chance to practice this and apply what you've learned. And what I'd like you to do is now click on the link at the bottom of this video and it'll take you to a, another video um, that will have a slightly different scenario. Pause that video, do the calculation, then start it and you'll see how I answered.